It is now time for WrestleMania. We are in. We, it is time for the biggest show of the calendar year. As you can tell, we open up with the Usos versus the Dudley Boys for the tag team titles. It featured great action, average heat on the match, and the Dudley Boys at the end of the match walked away with the WWE World Tag Team titles. And are now the WWE World Tag Team Champions for the first time since they came, uh, since they left WWE. Actually, I think this is the first time they're holding the title since about 2003. I could be wrong though. But either way, the Dudleys win and are very happy about it. Goldust, I mean Stardust, is now, uh, Stardust pops up on screen and is cutting one of his traditional main screen promos after the celebration subsides between Dudley Boy, with the Dudley Boys in the ring, we cut to the Titantron with Stardust, and Stardust cuts some, some promo, see, the reason why I did not do it with Goldust is because I knew the type of promo I wanted Goldust to say, but I also know the type of promo I want Stardust to stay to stay to say, and I don't know what to say in the promo other than for years you held me back because I was always. Goldust's brother, but now I'm not your brother, I'm your former tag team partner, and your brother is gone, and he'll, he is never coming back. You keep saying you're going to teach me respect, and make and have me figure out what it's like to be looking down at the back end of a real Texas beating the one thing you don't get Goldust is I'm gonna end your career and when I do that all I'll be seeing is stars And now we move on to the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, which, let's see if I can uh, zoom out a little bit. Uh, Biggie's the one on the end, and Kofi and Kane are next to John Cena. The reason why I had Cena win is because it gives credibility. Like when Hogan won the Royal Rumble. To your, uh, that first year, it gave the match credibility because of who won it and the name value that Hogan brings to the no to the match. Yes, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal could, in fact, be the springboard for future stars. But fact of the matter is, because of how they worked it last year with not doing anything with Cesaro, you really ha the match really meant nothing. So I had to. Um, get somebody in there, like an or Randy Orton or a John Cena, have them win, and give meaning to the match. That is the only reason why Cena won. Because I wanted him to give meaning to that trophy and the match. This way, next year, I could do the match and maybe use it as a springboard for to push somebody up the card. And now we move backstage with Renee Young and Dolph Ziggler. And Renee asks Dolph, Dolph, do you have any final thoughts before your match tonight with Daniel Bryan? You know what I do? The fact of the matter is, Daniel Bryan thinks that he deserves everything because of what he had when he got injured. 
Daniel fact of the matter is, you got injured and you had to go away. I got injured and I came back. Did I lose my title? Yes. But did I complain about it? No. I came back and proved once again why I am the best in that ring in this company. And this title that I'm holding right around my waist proves that I'm a workhorse and I will give 110% every night I'm in that ring. And just one more thing, what these people don't understand is, I turned on them because they welcomed Daniel Bryan back with open arms and expected him to automatically get a WWE World Heavyweight title shot. Why does he deserve one, yet he was out for a year? I've been here, I've been working my ass off when he was on the shelf and I haven't been told I deserve anything. But I just keep my mouth shut and keep working. I was sick and tired of it. I turned on these people because these people turned on me. And sided with that goat faced Loser, Daniel Bryan. And Bryan, tonight, you'll be the one looking up at the lights and hearing my name announced as still the Intercontinental Champion. Dolph, very angry and very irritated at the fact that Daniel Bryan is still as over as he is. Sorry. I'm playing with my mouse. Um, now we move to another part backstage with Lana and Rusev and Byron asks Byron asks Lana Lana, do you have anything any final thoughts before your ma before Rusev's match with By uh Kurt Angle later tonight for the United States title? Lana takes one look at Byron and says Tonight, Kurt Angle will be crushed. And America's last hope will be destroyed. Tensions are riding high for tonight at WrestleMania. Now we move to the announced position where JBL, Jerry Lawler, and Michael Cole discuss this upcoming contest between Stardust and Goldust, which happens right now. As Goldust defeats Stardust after a distraction from their dad, as their dad came down to the ringside to watch the match and not do commentary but sit beside the commentary position before the match and just spectate but then he got up he stood up and distra and it distracted Cody allowing Goldust to get the quick roll up and a pissed off Cody Rhodes Stardust loses to his brother now I move backstage with AJ Lee, who, I mean with Renee Young, whose guest at this time is the WWE Divas Champion, AJ. And Renee asks, AJ, I just wanted to get your thoughts on facing, having to face three challengers tonight in a fatal four-way elimination match. Renee... Since I won back this championship, I have been nothing but a fighting champion. Tonight will be the Bella Twins and Pages' last opportunities at my championship. And when, at the end of WrestleMania, one thing will be for certain, and that is AJ Lee will take her place, that I will take my place as the greatest WWE diva in 
history. Because I will walk out still the WWE champ the WWE Dudes champion. Ever so cocky is AJ going into her match as we move on and the we take a trip back to the announce position and the announcers discuss the history between Randy Orton and Seth Rollins that goes all the way back to November of last year when this uh, season started and they feed into this the history package promoting the history of Randy Orton and Seth Rollins which leads into the match Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins and by far probably one of the better matches on the show which was in 82 and Randy defeats Seth Rollins like he did in real life and now we move on um look uh I guess the best way to think about this match is think about this match as if there was a uh, think about this match as in between Randy and Seth uh, Randy versus Seth in this match that's when the musician the music uh the musician that was at the show did his song I know WWE didn't have that this year but I chose to so um, and that leads into this match with Miz and Mizdow, and Miz wins using the ropes for leverage, cheating, which could in fact lead to a rematch between Miz and Mizdow, because this was a solid, um, match, but I don't know. And now we move to the next segment, if the game would actually load, which is the Miz celebrating but he takes it a little overboard, much like Kurt Angle did when he was when he first joined WWE and would get excited off every victory. But he is very, very excited and then takes the micro microphone and says I am the Miz and I'm Awesome. Don't any of you ever forget that. The reason why the Miz won is because he has something going on in the future. I don't know if Miz Dow does. But now we move back to the announce position with JBL, Michael Cole, and Jerry Lawler. And they set the stage for the upcoming United States title match between Rusev and Kurt Angle. Which feeds us into this, the history package between Rusev and Kurt Angle, which leads all the way back to Rusev's match at Fastlane against Ryback and the return after nine long years of Kurt Angle to the WWE, of, uh, sorry, not nine years, yeah, nine, uh, nine years, after nine years away, Kurt Angle finally returns to the WWE. At Fastlane, and this pa history package promotes the feud and the past. And now we move on to the match. Kurt Angle versus Rusev. Another solid match for WrestleMania, just like it should be. And we move on. We move on, and Kurt Angle is the new. United States Champion. And this leads to classic Kurt Angle as Angle celebrates running around the ring like a madman because he is extremely, extremely happy that he and proud that he is the new United States Champion and 
the first person to pin Rusev one, two, three in the middle of the ring. Now we move to the next segment, which is Renee Young backstage with Bad News Barrett. And Renee asks, Bad News, why, why did you want this time? Why did you want this time? And Bad News says, looks at Renee and says, I'm afraid, Dean Ambrose, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. I beat you fair and square last week on SmackDown. And tonight, I'm not going to beat you. I'm going to embarrass you on the biggest stage in WWE. And there is nothing you can do about it. Boom! So, you know, symbolizing his bull hammer. And then we move to back to the broadcast position one more time with JBL, Michael Cole, and Jerry Lawler setting the stage for Bad News versus Dean Ambrose, which happens right now. And Dean Ambrose defeats Bad News in a Texas death match. And another solid match for the card that every match is supposed to be good. But this feud continues to surprise me with how good the matches have gotten. And now we move to the next segment. Which is Paul Heyman talking to Brock Lesnar backstage and as the camera tries to sneak up and get, catch a glimpse of what's going on the cameraman is intimidated away by Brock Lesnar and shooed by Paul Heyman to not uh, reveal any secrets that they might be talking about and now we move to the history package of Bray Wyatt versus The Undertaker starting back the night after the Royal Rumble when Bray's cryptic promo started and going all the way up to Fastlane uh, to a couple weeks ago when Bray Wyatt officially challenged The Undertaker to a casket match and now we move to the next segment the match which The Undertaker won and defeated Bray Wyatt in a casket match. Though people may think it's stupid, did Bray get pinned? Nope. He was in a casket. He was put in a casket. He was not pinned. That is why I did the match. To protect both men to w this way, the people could not say, Oh, Undertaker lost another match. Bray lost to The Undertaker. Yes, either way that's right. Either way that's right. But did either one of them get pinned? No. They were thrown in a casket and the lid was closed. Therefore, they were not pinned and did not have to submit, so the loss isn't as big a deal, because he wasn't pinned. Thank you. Now, we move to the next segment, which is the announcers talking up the WWE Divas title match and setting the stage for a match. Excuse me setting the stage for a match that is five months in the making 
These four divas have been feuding since November of last year, and this is the end of that feud tonight. And the winner and new WWE Divas Champion, Brie Bella, who's, who last eliminated AJ to win the match and the championship. Nikki is now the WWE Divas Champion. And now we move to the next segment, which is back to the broadcast position with... The announcers setting the stage and preparing us for the history, uh, setting the stage and pushing the fact that we are about to see history as Sting is about to compete in a WWE ring for the first time ever. Uh, a history package highlighting the history between Sting and Triple H. And by the way, Triple H uh, will have a special entrance for this match, and Kurt Angle and Rusev would have would have had a special entrance for their match. I totally forgot to mention it during uh, before when their match was up, but I remember now because I remembered that I was going to give Triple H a special entrance. But now we move on to the match. Fact of the matter is. Much like the real match, Hulk Hogan was seen, Billy Gunn was seen, Road Dogg was seen, Sean Waltman, uh, Sean Michaels, Sean Waltman, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, etc., etc., etc. They were all seen in the match, but after interference from HBK, distractions from the Outlaws and Sean Waltman, and the use of a sledgehammer, and two pedigrees, Sting falls, vict falls victim to Triple H. And now we move to the next segment, which is a video highlighting the training that Brock Lesnar has gone through leading into this match. And you hear the voiceover work of Paul Heyman putting over uh, Brock's accomplishments of being a two-time NCAA champion, the current WWE World Heavyweight Champ, the reigning, undisputed, defending WWE World Heavyweight Champion, and the Beast Incarnate. And now we move to the next segment, which is the announcers putting over and setting the stage for Kevin Owens versus Chris Jericho right now. And also putting over Kevin Owens' accomplishment, both men's accomplishments going into this match, and how they got to this point. Things got to this point. But now, as you can tell, Kevin Owens defeats Chris Jericho. I would have liked something better than a handful of tights, but I can't pick what tainted finish. We have, I can only pick, Tainted Finish. But Kevin Owens wins off a hand, a hand full of tights from Chris Jericho. And either way, Kevin Owens stole a victory off the veteran. And now we go back to the video, video board of Roman Reigns and his training regimen going into the biggest match of his career. Putting o they put over the fact, um, let's say the voiced over is Tom Phillips. He puts over Roman's accomplishments as a part of the Shield and being one of the most dominant stables ever to step foot in WWE. He puts over the fact that Roman set the record for most eliminations last year in the Royal Rumble. And he puts over the fact that Roman Reigns beat 29 other men to win the 2015 Royal Rumble and get to this point. We move on to the next segment, which is the history package of Daniel Bryan and Dolph Ziggler's feud, which goes back. 
to the Royal Rumble when Daniel eliminated Dolph and Dolph's jealousy boiled over. Because remember, Dolph said it before earlier in the show that he hates the fans for expecting Daniel to get back, automatically get a world title shot just because he's been on the sh just because he got the title vacated from him last year after being injured. Nobody was hoping Dolph got the title back when he got injured, even though he was man enough to fight and lose it. Now we move to the next segment, which is Daniel Bryan versus Dolph Ziggler. In a very disappointing match, which was a 59 by the way, which is an extremely disappointing match because I invested a lot into this match, as this match has been spending, has spent the last two months building, and is the semi-main event. Actually, I should have made the match before this a semi-main. And it should also tell you something when the Divas match almost got better. But either way, Daniel Bryan won the Intercontinental title. And now let's move on to this match because I'm very disappointed. And now we move on to the history package promoting the history, uh, the video package promoting where, how this feud between Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar started and how each man got to this point. And now we move to the next segment, which is this match. Now, you might wonder why it says an angle. It's because of how I set it up. In reality, in, oh, okay, fine, in the game, Brock didn't want to do, uh, didn't, I, I did something. And the only way I could do it is by doing an angle. But the match begins like it did in real life. The two inflict so much punishment on the other, on each other, that both men can barely stand up from being so exhausted. This match is def definitely defying expectations that people set. We see both men hitting each fi each other's finishers, and it takes. Three Superman punches and a spear to not even knock down Brock Lesnar for Roman Reigns, even after Brock gets split. But out of no and then from out of nowhere, Brock catches Roman after Roman tries to deliver the Superman punch. Brock catches him, throws him on his shoulders, flings him around with an F5, and both men are down, exhausted in the middle of the ring after 20 plus minutes of going at it. And then, out of nowhere, Seth Rollins' entrance theme starts. Oh my god, he's cashing in money in the bank. Seth Rollins is cashing in money in the bank. The first person in the history of money in the bank to cash in at WrestleMania. Seth Rollins is cashing in money in the bank. And now, we move on to the next segment. With Seth Rollins defeating, pinning, running in, and pinning Roman Reigns with, and uh, pinning Roman Reigns after a curb stomp to both Roman and Brock, and neither one of them can respond because they've been going at it for 20 plus minutes. Seth Rollins, with the hijack of the century, wins the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania. Yes, because of that match, the main event, and how I did it, I could have done it better. I probably could have. But, because of how I did it, and because of how I was forced to do it, um, WrestleMania did not get as good as it should have. But, doesn't really matter, because this is officially the end of the this edition of the How I Would Book It. I much it is much appreciated for all the support this um, for this series thus far in the new this new 
start for this series, the new start for this series, and I appreciate all the support. The WWE installment of the series is over. Look for the conclusion coming up in the next couple of days. Uh, let me know what you guys thought of WrestleMania in the comment section below. Let me know if you thought over the over this series, over the extent of this edition. Let me know if you thought from part one of this part of this of this installment of the series, and to now that I've gotten better with the camera. Throw it down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe to my channel for more content just like this. And I hope you enjoy. See you next time.